The genesis of the conflict at Bighorn occurs at the spiritual birthplace of the Lakota Sioux in present-day South Dakota. In 1868, the Treaty of Fort Laramie recognizes the Black Hills as Lakota territory in exchange for an end to hostilities. It also sets up a permanent reservation, implying eventual containment, a nuance lost to the Lakota at the time. The government's goal is to confine all Native Americans to agencies or reservations. They didn't want them to be scattered, and the only way that they could contain was to put them on the reservation. Put them on the reservation and keep an eye on them and watch them. Dozens of Native leaders signed the document. There were two types of Natives, Indians. We have the non-treaty Indian and the treaty Indians. Hunk Papa Sioux Chief Sitting Bull is among those who refuse to sign. But almost immediately, in the Black Hills, a complication emerges. The rumors about gold begin to develop right after the signing of the treaty. The agitation to kind of resolve that question results in the government-sponsored expedition in 1874, which is led by George Armstrong Custer. In the Civil War, Custer was a Union hero, though an unlikely one, having graduated last in his class from West Point. Custer had a long history of successful, brave, fights. Uh, he will often have a charge into Confederate units and came out victorious even at Gettysburg. After the war, a 27-year-old Custer reinvents himself as an Indian fighter. He was a larger-than-life personality. He had already declared interest in political office. Those larger ambitions are shared by his wife, Elizabeth, or Libby. She was big in society. She came from a prominent family. They're big in politics. They saw their union as a sort of bigger social opportunity, one kind of playing off the other. They're a power couple. But their bid for power will prove perilous. Soon, there would be secrets and bloodshed. <laughs> 